I think the key to drawing cars easily is to understand why they're so hard to draw. I understand this well because cars were one of those things in my streetscapes that I used to avoid drawing. Cars and people, so my streets look pretty empty. But when I finally understood what the problem was, I discovered that cars were no more difficult and no easier to draw than anything else. And exactly the same process I was using for my buildings would produce cars that didn't look like the lumpy blobs that my cars had looked like up till then. Our biggest problem is that we know too well what a car looks like. And while this sounds like an advantage, it actually can be a disadvantage. Let me show you how in these examples. Because when we think of cars, we usually think of cars looking like this or like this. But when we see cars on the street, we're usually seeing them looking more like this, this or this. But because we think we know what a car looks like, when we have a car in our reference that we want to draw, that's looking more like the perspective angle of one of these three cars, we don't realize that when we actually go to draw, we're thinking more of the car picture we have in our head than we are actually looking carefully to see what is the exact angle of the car we're drawing. And how does that mean we have to draw the various shapes of the car? And this isn't a problem just with cars. This is the more general problem when we draw, that we draw what we think we've seen, not what we've actually seen. But for some reason, cars seem to be a particularly bad subject for this issue. And that's why so many cars end up looking lumpy or distorted, not as much like a car as we would like. I want to focus now on drawing two areas of a car to illustrate exactly what I'm talking about and then we'll employ all the principles of what we should be doing in an actual drawing of another car. So I want to start by concentrating just on the car wheels. We'll start with the unhelpful memory that we have in our head of what a car wheel looks like. When we think of a car wheel, we almost certainly are thinking of something such as this. The principle that then starts to operate when I go to draw a wheel is I'm thinking this is what a wheel looks like. And what I see in a lot of wheels on cars is that they are far more round and the wheel hub is far rounder than what could possibly be in their reference for the angle that we're looking at the car from. So let's look at three different positions of wheel and wheel hub and see exactly what we should be drawing. We'll start by looking at this wheel. So in fact, nowhere do we have anywhere near a nice rounded circle, semicircle, let alone a whole circle. At best we have some ellipses, but where this wheel hub is pretty symmetrical side on, because of the sloping of the car side, this curve even is not symmetrical. If we look at this wheel hub and tire, we see there's a whole lot less roundness of a circle to be seen. This semicircular wheel hub that we think of as surrounding the wheel is actually just, I'm actually identifying this shape in my observation before I start to draw. And I'm actually drawing the side of the car by drawing this shape. Whereas if I haven't looked carefully at my reference, somehow it seems very easy for many of us to want to put far more of a rounded open space around our wheel. Possibly more what we see in this position, in this perspective, rather than this one. And we'll finish looking at the wheel with this most extreme angled perspective. I'm looking at this space in here, which is much more this shape than that shape. 
and we've come a long way from this shape. It's gone from being a circle to a very narrow ellipse. So let's look now at another part of the car and then we'll pull everything together with a drawing of a car. Now we want to look at our side view of our side windows. And when we think of the side windows of a car, this is the sort of thing we're thinking about. And we end up with a profile for our side windows looking something like this. But of course, more commonly, if we're drawing a car in the street, we're seeing it from an angled perspective. So let's start with this view. Instead of something that stretches out like this, it looks more like this. And you might have noticed that I was committing the classic error from drawing what I knew, which was that this had quite a long slope down. So I began to draw that remembering this, especially having just drawn it, and not actually observing that it actually doesn't go very far before it changes direction from this view. So let's look now at drawing the side angles from this view. And notice that whereas here the top line actually seems to come across and down, in this view it actually arches up and comes down. So now we'll look at our most extreme angled side windows. We end up with something that looks more like this. And because I draw and follow drawings of urban sketching, when I look at the cars, they often don't quite make sense for the position that they're in. The wheels are either too round and the side windows keep wanting to be longer than they really should be. It creates all sorts of proportion problems because we've created the car with features that we've drawn already out of proportion. And usually the more features we then try to add in, things like the side mirrors, lights, door handles, fuel caps and the like, the more obvious it becomes that these things don't actually fit together the way we expect them to because our proportions have been distorted. If I were to say to you, what's that? 99% of you would say, oh, that's a row of car windows. If I were to say to you, what's this? 99% of you wouldn't have any idea. That just shows how much the individual parts we see of a car aren't really recognizable as parts of a car from many positions. Here we have a different car. Again, side on, it's really clear what everything is. We see the rounded circles, the rounded shadows under the round wheel hubs, we see the long stretch of windows that we could identify as a row of car windows if we just saw a line work drawing of them. But here we see the car as we're more likely to see it. So if I'm to draw this car from this angle successfully, I need to forget all of my memories of what cars look like from this angle. And I need to look at this as not a car, but as a series of lines that define certain shapes and I need to aim to draw my lines to create these same shapes. I need to get a sense of the overall proportions of the car. One thing I find helpful in a subject that I think potentially could be confusing for me is to measure the width. So this car from its widest points is 124 millimeters wide. So the halfway point is 62 millimeters, which is here. So when I draw my car, whichever part I start with, I need to try and make sure that from here to here ends up being the same as from here to here. I need to work out what's the most helpful part of the car to start with. And for me, these window areas are probably going to be the most straightforward to get the shapes and proportions correct and the alignment with each other. But I need to realize that the top of this window is going to be above the top of this window, that this corner is going to be some way up the top of the center of the back window. These are the reference points I need to be observing before I put the pen on paper. From here to here is looks about from there to there. So it's just a little bit more from here to, to the top of the wheel hub from here. But I also need to notice that the top of the wheel hub pretty much lines up 
with this corner. These are all the reference points I'm trying to see when I look at my reference before I put the pen on paper. When I come to draw this line, I want to make sure that I get this spot here level pretty much with the top of the wheel, which should come across just a bit above this boot line. So now I'm going to put all this into practice and see how I go. So here's my car. And let me tell you, I have never in my life before tried to draw a car, which is actually the subject of the drawing. I have only ever drawn cars, often from this angle, but as very small background parts of a larger streetscape. And while I can see things that aren't quite right, I made a mistake almost immediately with this line here. For the 15 minutes of an exercise of careful observation and trying to draw lines and shapes that I see and at the same time not think about what they are but simply try to draw them as individual shapes and lines and align them with each other then I'm happy enough with this as a 15 minute exercise. And if I were to draw cars as a main subject area as many people do then I would certainly improve on this by doing this exercise with more and more cars because whatever we practice, we get better at. But for many of us, including myself, the most important thing to practice when drawing cars is to practice forgetting about what we already know about what a car looks like and to practice observing the actual reference, to practice seeing the actual shapes which are in our reference and not the shapes that are in our memory. If you'd like to have a go at drawing a car, I'll post that photo that I drew onto my community page. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Why not give this technique of observing and drawing cars a go? It might even be fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.